Crowey, how many bad hires have you made? So, beers and basics. <laughs> that was terrible, eh? That was great. That was a great <laughs> intro. That was terrible. Hey, to us. <laughs> <laughs> our first episode of Beers and Basics. Mm. How many bad hires have you made? None. I'm like the daily of hiring. Really? So no, you never made a double hire? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually, it's funny because um, I, I did what I'm calling the cardinal sin. Like the, yeah. my first hire was an apprentice, which yeah. I feel, I still back that specifically yeah. in a certain stage. Like if you're on that- The pro- type of business. If you're on that project yeah. rough in, yeah, perfect. Mm-hmm. If you're on a service and maintenance, um, go throw your money in a fry pan and just watch it sizzle. Yes. And you know, scramble some eggs with it, right? Like, yes. you might as well be doing that. But um, yeah, and I remember, so I got the one apprentice and then we were busy and guess what I did? Got another apprentice? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well I can relate to that because- <laughs> It's like insane. Yes. So you, well, what happened straight away? I can probably guess that you spent all day on site tearing your hair out and then spent all night doing admin i was a full-time direction giver yeah i mean the admin wasn't so bad because you're on this you're on the one job yeah fair cool um yeah. but like you know it's still there though yeah the dual apprentice is pretty nuts because it's only applicable to sort of i would say one job a week max yeah in terms of like if you're on that fit off or rough in yeah it could be fantastic mm-hmm. but is that all day every day chance they got to leave and go here or go back yep. there and bits and pieces but that's not even the, the biggest sin i um i just had this this someone start and kind of watched them and i knew something was off but we were busy yeah and and it literally i know people out there and you'll be able to relate to this yep. it just felt like a couple of months passed yeah and then he came up to me and he was like i'm finishing up in six months, and I was just what? <laughs> what? <Hang on. laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What? Let me turn my let me turn my ears up. Like yeah. it just felt like, and I was just thinking that actually put me. And I think that you can learn a lot from your you can learn a lot from your bad like from your mistakes. Oh, what from you your bad know. decisions, yeah. kind of teach you everything. Mm-hmm. From that moment, like more or less, no one got past us. So I was basically in terms of I wasn't surprised by someone finishing. Yeah. About eighteen months out, I was confronting people we're not confronting it's a poor choice of words but asking people like hey you're gonna be charged as a tradie in 18 months time how are you feeling about that yeah just setting that tone but i guess i knew in that moment that it was a poor choice mm-hmm. and i lacked the communication skills to to recognize and it, one of the biggest things i learned in business is it's my business and my culture yep and i remember just being so busy just shutting down to like literally walking past things and just ignoring it yeah. because it was easier not to say something. It's creating more work for you and you feel like you're probably already full. Yeah, I was already full like, and, and pe- people would be like, oh, I can't, I don't, like a tradie call, I don't want to work with him and yes. someone else, I don't want to. And so I kind of knew, but I wasn't confronting it. And this is, that put in place, you know, staff performance reviews, yep. fantastic, fantastic to get to know how people think and, and what they want and, and making a mutually beneficial relationship. Mm-hmm. But also, I think just completely owning the space. Yeah. But yeah, lot, lots of bad highs. And uh, I guess we're talking today about hiring. Yes. Uh, how about you? Bad highs? Yeah, I mean, mine's a similar story. Can you, um, can you can we name and shame? I didn't name anyone, but I'm happy for you too. <laughs> <laughs> put, me, put me under the pipe. No, look, I, um, I have a similar experience to you. My first hire was an apprentice. And um, I operated more in the service and maintenance space um, with a little bit of project work um, back then. And, and it, what, what would you say your ratio is sort of now? Uh, so we're sort of like one to one-ish, um, yeah, roughly, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll just keep one tradesman ahead. Um, yeah. Just because we do a lot of, we, we have a large bit of service and maintenance, so sending a tradesman and an apprentice is not viable yeah. on majority of service and maintenance jobs um, and can actually be detrimental to customer relationships and things like that because they just see that person standing there and they're like, oh, they'll be like, you're not charging me for that person, are you? Sort of thing. So I was so, going so, to until you said that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, Note well, to self. Well, I yeah. was, yeah, no. Yeah. Um, but yeah, similar to you, I hired an apprentice first off and um, great kid. Um, we would just work all day and then I would do all the admin at night and I'm like, I'm sitting there going, what am I doing? And it's like, you, they don't know. So it's just like, can you do this? Can you do that? And they don't do it right. So then you go and fix it back up for them. And it was just a nightmare. Um, 
But yeah, uh, that was just like the, the first high that I've had. I've also had some other ones um, that haven't been um, fantastic. And probably the biggest thing I've learned about it all is you need to have some kind of process in place. So that can begin with the screening process and the hiring of um, the questions that you ask, the person that you look for. What are you looking for? Because um, realistically at the moment, we're in a labor shortage. We, we probably have never seen it like this in our time in the industry or um, you know, people talk about it hasn't been like this since World War II, like that's a long time ago. Um, so I really think it's about having the process um, so that you get the right questions. But also um, the other thing that we've, that I've done is I ask my guys, I've always asked the um, guys and girls, do you know anyone? Is anyone looking? Because they're going to put someone forward who they've either worked with before they know who they want to work with. So then immediately, like you talked about, you had some culture problems with, I don't want to work with this person, I don't want to work with that person. Immediately, you're short-circuiting that because they're happy to work with that particular person. Um, and I think it's really important to just at least have some some uh, form of structure around your hire. Don't just, you know, don't just live it on a prayer, Bon Jovi style. Everyone loves Bon Jovi. Everyone does love Bon Jovi. It's, it'd be a rare beast to not like him. Yeah. Looks-wise and music-wise. Um, <laughs> and business-wise, extremely successful yeah, business. Yeah, super savvy. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think for me, like, going back to the things that I learned, I would often be flat out on the tools and flat out at night, mm -hmm. open the computer. This is a side note, but if you're opening a computer every night, you're doing something wrong. Like, it, you, yeah. no one... Most times, and this is my story, I know a lot of people can relate, you open the computer at eight and you look at it and you're like, I'll just, just like watch something on YouTube, surfing, yeah. go to kind of facey, insta, something like that. Yeah. And then I'll start at nine and yeah. then nine comes around, 901, 902, you're like, it'll make quarter past. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like 10 o'clock, you go, I'm tired. Yeah, so. and, and you've done like no productive work, but you're tired and you feel yes. like you're working on time, but you're not working on time, you're just staring at a computer. You're busy without being busy. Yeah, so you're making a bad situation worse. Mm -hmm. But I think for me, a couple of key indicators, I'd be opening the computer every night and Elodie, my wife, would be, I think you need to hire. She was always onto it before I was. I'm like, nah, babe. <laughs> <laughs> I got this. Yeah, yeah, as the head of the household. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I, I remember just um, a couple of key indicators, I think, Confronting the key indicators to hire is really yeah, important. Yeah. So we talk about uh, staff like you know billable utilization, mm -hmm. utilization rate. Yeah, yeah. If if you're busy and pushing you know 32, 40, 44, 48, 50 hours in the week on on repeat, yeah. then chances are you might need to hire because mm -hmm. you're at your capacity, and that's when you feel the most stressed and tired because it's like they're pushing hard on the tools, pushing hard on the office, mm -hmm. and then pushing hard on the tools. You've always got to be somewhere. Yeah, I feel like you yeah. always have to be somewhere and letting someone down. Yeah, so a key indicator to hiring, the first one for me, is how, how much are you... Um, like how much are you working per week? Yep. Because if I'm working 50 hours, then someone could take that 10 or 15 hours off me, that yep. 20 hours off me, make mine 30. Now I'm achievable yep. and I've filled half of someone's week, right? Yep. Another thing is, and this is, um, this is hard to keep an exact metric on, but pretty important information. How much work comes in every single week? Yeah. So that's, if you're half service maintenance, half project, that's like a bit of a difficult question, but I guess understanding how many of Betty's jobs come in every single week? Well, I think looking at that is uh, probably a simple way of doing that is, okay, this particular tradesman here, he's just doing, he just does service and maintenance. So the way that we, we operate is that we have our project teams and then we have our service and maintenance guys and we have a couple who cross back and forth depending on the jobs. Um, so I look at it purely like how many, how many service guys are full each week and then you can look to build out to see are they under the pump and then how much is in advance because obviously service and maintenance work it's got a time frame that it needs to be completed in because generally speaking they need that light replaced that's not working in the stairwell you know within a reasonable time frame um but the project the rough end's not starting for another two weeks so it's completely different in the urgency side side of things so what I'm trying to say there is that you can't have the service guys booked too far in advance. So you can't have them booked out for a month yeah. because then how do you help your clients? Well, there is that sweet spot, right? And yeah, I think that how much work comes in every single week and, mm -hmm. and then the other two indicators for me, 
and I'll, I'll circle back to what you said in a sec, the other two indicators are how much um, work have I got in advance, service and maintenance, yep. and how much work have I got in advance. So what are those big rocks in place? Like okay. I've got that ongoing maintenance contract every six months when or four then, yep. and I've got that project rough in here, and uh, that one's gonna carry, that part was gonna carry two or three people for yep. a year. And I liked having those jobs because that was almost home base. Yeah, It's pissing down rain, mm-hmm. uh, someone's getting advance service, yep. You, you're on leave, tradies like, on leave yeah. and or someone calls in sick and someone can just slot into that home base yeah. um, but circling back to what you said before and I think it's pretty critical is there is a sweet spot of time frame yeah. with service and maintenance how long someone will wait for the light yeah. and you just got to reflect on your own spending habits here too if you needed something done and called someone they said they were four to six weeks away mm-hmm. it's like whoa yeah. should I try someone else yeah. um, the sweet spot's probably two to three weeks yeah I would say, and if you're continually pushing that, mm-hmm. then you might want to look at hiring. And this is the key indicator. You know, a lot of people, um, if I asked you in January, you'd be like, I'm two to three weeks booked out. Yeah. And I ask you in March, two to three weeks booked out. Mm-hmm. I ask you in April, two to three weeks. So it's the same kind of trend. And then November's like, yeah. <laughs> put a fork <laughs> in me, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm done, right? Yeah. So, and it's, it's like, what happened? So in the two to three weeks booked out all the time, work's coming in, mm-hmm. you're quoting work, you're doing work. So it's like, you know, you could have had someone and when someone else comes on board, they can actually help you to do what you're meant to be doing. Yeah. Because like I said, originally, if you're pushing too hard, chances are that those quotes aren't getting out. Yeah, which is lost work. Yeah, which is which is lost worth, or or I, I mean I've done this before. <laughs> it's so embarrassing when you call like someone and go, oh hey, we're ready for you to do your job next Monday, and they're like, yeah, cool, that's uh, awesome, but it was done. we had that done a couple of weeks ago, yeah. and I'm like, oh, a dagger to my soul, <laughs> and um, we've all been there. And if you lose that client, you lose that network. Yeah. You lose everyone they know because now someone else has had a chance to. To get, front to get up in your yeah. grill, yeah. to to have dinner with your family. <laughs> and, you know, I'll just work. You just sit here and have dinner. Like it's um it's crazy. So I think knowing when to pull the trigger is really important yeah. and kind of always wanting to be a little bit early yes. on the hire. It's hard to do. It's you know what, coaching's actually a lot easier than because you're sitting outside the emotion of it. Yes. When you're inside, when you're on the hamster wheel, it's hard to see you on a hamster wheel until someone's like, Someone oh, you're on a hamster wheel. Yeah. Like, oh, I didn't know I was on the hamster wheel. No, just like, so I think that's where coaching comes into it because you can sit outside someone's situation and um, and observe it yeah. and go, I've seen this before. I, I, it's a key indicator you need to hire yeah. and uh, go from there. So, so once you've recognized the indicators of hiring, what's your go-to? Do you advertise? Yeah, so with the way of the world that it's been the last few years, um, we had a couple of hires just through the boys, um, so they knew people and and got them on board, but the um, last few that have had to be online, um, look, you, depending on the time of year um, and the type of person you're after, sometimes you get plenty of applications, sometimes sometimes you don't get a few. I've been speaking to another, uh, a number of, colleagues in the industry who also have contracting businesses. Um, a real good mate of mine who um, I used to work with, he's quite large now, um, they're looking to recruit from overseas um, because that's the easiest way to fill their um, needs. What um, star size? Is that- uh, so I think they've got about 60 or 70. Wow. Yeah, and they're huge. quite large, yeah. yeah. So they've got uh, two, two and a half years of work last time we spoke in front of them that needs to be filled with staff. So yeah, we, we look to advertise. Um, there's multiple ways that you can go about it. Advertising is interesting. It's something that I never had to do. Yep. We, all our hires were from word of mouth, but admittedly, it wasn't this tight of yep. market. It was a very different market <laughs> where you know you could you could start someone on a probation on thirty two dollars an hour, yep. going to thirty eight or forty. But now it just seems like anyone walking through the door yep. wants that forty five to fifty yep. sort of mark. Yep. Unless you're in the Sunshine Coast, who seem to be getting away with <laughs> murder. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, obviously, depending on what region you're in, and sometimes the regional towns are actually like they pay more. Yeah, they because pay a lot no more, one, yeah. no we're competing with, we, and you're competing sometimes with mining or yeah. large organisations um, as well. Yeah, so a couple of good ways to hire is like, you know, check your existing network. Yeah. Do you know anyone? 
Um, ask your tradesmen. Ask your, ask your tradies, ask your staff. Who have you worked with in the past? Yeah. You know, who ask you bring those with? guys up. They may know someone. Yeah. They might, they might not be the person, but they, they also have a network as people well. People know people. Yeah. Uh, ask other trades. Builders, yeah. plumbers, um, you know, just ask around. Dual trade entice, enticement can yeah. be um, quite... Enticing, yeah, enticing <laughs> like, for some like others. if you know if you got an aircon person that wants also to be licensed in electrical yep. or vice, vice versa, versa. Yep. or you do a lot of solar and that and might upskill yep. that person it's um, i think another one is speak to your wholesaler um which Whole i think is really up. important to have wholesaler relationships now um, or on that later i'm we're, really big on wholesaler we're big on wholesale relationships but like I would say the wholesaler is a vortex of lost time, yeah. cold sausage rolls, yeah. light beers, yeah. and um, just gossip. Yeah. It's it like is, just yeah. a cesspool of People gossip. talk. But they, they know everything, right? Because yeah. they know who's upset, who's yeah. disgruntled, who didn't get the pay rise, yeah. who's in the 1999 yeah. high ace. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So and so yeah. got the new car, I didn't get the new car. Yeah, so yeah. They're, they're the sort of areas that um, I would be looking in. And obviously, like we touched on before, your, your own staff, um, speak with them. Um, to see if they know what you want. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Um, underrated for me is an email marketing campaign. Mm-hmm. To obviously everyone, you've got X amount of clients, fifty, a thousand, five thousand, yeah. doesn't really matter. But those people know people, mm-hmm. so just something simple like, "Hey, we're hiring. We're hiring. Yeah, yep. here it we're comes. Really do, you, do you know anyone? Mm-hmm. I don't. Gotta admit, I don't love the finders." fee or yeah. or like signing bonus because mm-hmm. i feel like anyone that came to me for a thousand goes to you for 1200 was... and, and then it's like if you've got your existing six to eight staff and they're like uh joey just got a thousand bucks yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i got a slap in the face yeah. when i started you know and and i think do for one do for all part of the cultural yeah kind of stuff so you can expect it just in my opinion you can expect some backlash yeah on that you, i can't give you a haircut and not yeah. everyone else a haircut and then yeah. how does your admin staff like you're big on the one team one dream and we spoke about this heaps of times but your admin staff are also part of that yeah. dream so do they get a haircut do they get a sign of bonus yeah does, does Susie get nails done yeah your I know nails look great right? they do like, they're fantastic I yeah. chew them <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. once we've once you've identified particular talent what is the key for you then so for me it's about having a little bit of a process around the questions I ask them and the interview process around that. What do you? How do you feel about that? Yeah. So my original interview process was just have a coffee. You're high. With them. <laughs> <laughs> you you breathing right? <laughs> Let me touch your face and make sure you're real. You um, so so yeah. I mean, like pretty much probably everyone listening, I've had those people where you so under the pump and you're like. Can you start tomorrow? Mm-hmm. And I think if I was going to be on site with them tomorrow, it's kind of fine. Yeah. Um, I don't mind a, a subcontractor that get you out of trouble, and especially, you, you know, I don't know how to politely say this, but you can wear them down. Yep. If, if you pay everyone every single Monday, you're giving them 40 hours a week. Make sure you pay the super, by the yeah. way. It's pretty critical, yep. and you can, be, um, you can be responsible for that, yep. and it's just good to know that. But, uh, but yeah, I don't mind. Like, and then once they realize how easy it is working for you and your culture, it mm-hmm. gets, they might cross over. Mm-hmm. We've had a few people cross yeah. over. Uh, not a large percentage, but some. But yeah, so my interview process used to be like, let's have a coffee and, um, and just be like, yeah, we're pretty good company. Hey, <laughs> yeah. pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and great just, to work for. Do, yeah, we do. Um, and I think, I think for me, confidence was a big part of that. Mm-hmm. I had to recognize that. We were excellent to deal, yeah. to, to work with. We did have excellent clients. So I had to basically pitch the vision to them. Mm-hmm. And you know, and I always pitched it to people like, you've got to be happy here and I've got to be happy with you. It's yeah. just a two-way street. So, But you know, tell them what's in the future. Hey, we yeah. work for these clients. We work seven till three. We call that an eight-hour day. Mm-hmm. We look after our staff really well. Yeah. Like I wanted people surfing or with their kids at four. Yeah. So that's why we call it seven till three and eight-hour day. Yeah. And if you're working in our local shire, you could stretch that to 3.30 and yep. still be home at four, but the rule was sort of be home at four. But yeah, I think just like, just making sure that you ask questions in there, cool, mm-hmm. but also that um, you're pitching the vision of your company yep. and, and make sure people know what they're getting themselves into. Yep. And on that, like people see through the cracks. Yeah. So you might have someone interview really, really well. Yeah. And like, yeah, I'll just do anything for the company. Hey, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I'll just, and you go, oh, this person sounds awesome. Yeah. And I think that's where the probation comes into it yes. for me. Three month probation. Yeah. I don't care if it's your mom, your brother, your yeah. auntie, your best mate, or 
Joey down the road, just yeah. everyone that comes on board has a three month probation. And how you pitch that is, hey, we have this probation period because it's got to work for you. You've got to yeah. be happy and it's also got to work for me. Yeah. And, um, and then we'll see how we go. And yeah. on that, that's possibly the most, and you know, going back to those bad hires, yeah. had you had that probation period in yeah. place with, with key questions to ask one month, two months, three <laughs> months, not necessarily questions for the, um, for the employee, no, but ask questions team. for questions for me too. Yeah, like, yeah. how am I feeling? Do I like this person? Yeah. Does my team had any issues? Yeah. Ask like, your tradies. Ask the key people who, ask, who you work yeah. with and trust. I even ask um, our clients mm. as well. I'm like, hey, how have you found so and so? And you, you know, find that because I often thought that if I asked you what a problem with this shirt is, you'd be come up with something. So it's like, do you find that if you ask someone to come up with it? Because yeah, I've got a problem with your shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Cool. And, mean, what it, and what it stands for. <laughs> um, a, a large problem, actually. <laughs> we can talk about that later. Um, but I think it's, a, I mean, I, I don't like frame it to them to like I'm fishing. It's more just like, oh, hey, have you, have you met someone so on site? Um, how were they? And, you know, they, they might give you something, they might not. But generally speaking, I've found our really good clients that we have, I have a, a good relationship with, they give some really good feedback on it all. Because ultimately, they're probably gonna spend a fair bit of time with them. So if it's not a good fit, it's clearly not gonna be a good fit for you as a business owner. Yeah, it just highlights the importance of having those relationships with the clients, yep. you know? But, um, but yeah, so I think it's just a matter of recognizing what you can do to hire, and then once you get that person on board, having those right and critical interviews in place, yep. and not overlooking it because you're busy, no, it's a priority. It's a priority. It's a it priority. Be a priority. Staff are a priority, uh, not just for them, but for you, because culture is everything. Yes. And that's another thing you can check when you, if you can't establish anyone. Uh, so if you can't establish, if you can't find anyone, maybe, maybe you're a dickhead. Like <laughs> maybe no one wants to go to work for you. And oh, I've got to touch on this because I've got um, I got a story. I know you've got a story on this too. I remember getting asked one day. I was driving and super stressed. We had like 10 people and I had the apprentice with me. And um, and he goes, how, how do you think I'm going? Sure. And I was like, oh man, to be honest, not not heaps good. Yeah. And and he goes, oh, but I, I like words of encouragement. It's my love language. Yeah. And I was like, I don't give a stuff about your love languages, man. Like, I, I'm, not your, I'm not your partner. Yeah. I, I, don't, I, I don't, like, I don't care. Yeah. And I remember being quite arrogant and yeah. egotistical about that. And I got home and told Elodie, like, like, dude died in a hang gliding accident. What an idiot. And I'm like, this idiot asked me, like, to share his love language. And she was like, whoa, you're out of line. Like, yeah. th- what are you thinking? This is like a person asking yeah. you to encourage him. And you, you did that. And I was like, it was just... They're being very vulnerable in that situation. Yeah, too. and I was a dickhead. Like, yeah. And then, guess what? He quit. Yeah. And he was a great human. I'm shocked. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually called him up, like maybe six or 12 months after and and just apologize i was like dude yeah, I'm, so i know what happened and i said this i said this and i'm really sorry and he was like man that's so good but thanks and yeah. we stay in contact and everything but like i guess that's the kind of things you can do under stress yeah and that's why it's really important to relieve that stress but i know you've got a story like sort of similar yeah i've got a couple of couple of stories, couple of stories. Uh, around that yeah it uh yeah, it um, it can be super super stressful. Because kind of, you were saying that you like yelled at that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, yeah, just lost it. Um, yeah, just they didn't communicate to me. I didn't communicate to them either, really. So it's like no one's fault at the end of the day. Or it's no one's fault, but everyone's fault at the same time. And I just needed them to go to another job, and I reacted poorly to it. Um, I just like I just lost it I was just like you guys you know you need to do this and this that we've talked about this and um yeah he just didn't he was like yeah I think a couple of weeks later he, he sort of left um it's not you it's me <laughs> yeah it's just, you know, yeah it just you know it did, yeah. didn't really lead on with too much but I was like yeah that was so inappropriate um yeah. and it took me back to when I've been in other scenarios and other you know uh, uh you know supervisor leading hand or someone in in a, an authority position or something comes on to site and they yell at people and the reaction of once they leave is like did you see how so-and-so carried on like what a dickhead and you you just realize that 
there's no good comes of it. Like no yelling yeah. at people, it achieves nothing. So and they're humans too, and I think that's really important to remember. Yeah, nothing good comes of rushing, and nothing no. good comes of raising your voice to to anyone. But um, but it's, I mean it's embarrassing to even talk about. But hopefully, yeah. saying it out loud, we can. Um, you know, sometimes you're just not very good to work for. Yeah. And I think originally. And kind of landing the plane here, but no one signed up to be the dickhead boss. No, no one said when I ever get a boss, like when I become yeah. the boss, I'm gonna um, never throw a party. Yeah, be super. <laughs> you know, rude. you're gonna yeah. work at work here. You're gonna work overtime. Yeah. I'm gonna be really rude to you, mm-hmm. and you're gonna drive a 1990 Prius, right? With yeah, with an extension ladder on the roof. Yeah, right. So, Duct taped on. Yeah. <laughs> not buying straps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's it's crazy, but it can happen, especially for me when the year wasn't quite what I thought yeah. it was. So you go through a whole year and you're like, oh, I didn't quite know what I thought or yeah. what I could or should or would have maybe. Yeah. And that's why um, calculators and calculating and forecasting and um, and planning is really important because yeah. it's like, you know, I remember the year we, the year when it clicked for us was about five or six years in yeah. and I was able to sit there. I, I knew what I was gonna earn. This is like two months out of financial year. I knew I was earning good money. Mm-hmm. I knew how much tax I owed. I just yeah. knew everything. I was right on top of my right figures, and it was like this is easy. Yeah. I can do, and you know it's like when that stuff falls into place, it's like you can treat everyone better. I know that sounds kind of awful, but it's like sometimes you can take your stress out on people that don't deserve it. Yeah. And and that can be staff, unfortunately, sometimes. Yeah. So I think just checking yourself before you wreck yourself, and um, and making sure that your staff are prioritized, mm-hmm. and but also um, that you're catching up with them quarterly and making sure that they're okay. I've got a really good staff performance review. Yeah, yeah, you do, yes. Um, <laughs> it's really good. I, I took inspiration from my son's um, school application where they pretty much asked the same question yep. 10 times in a row in a different light. Mm-hmm. And anyway, so the kind of uh, form we're presenting to people is one that asks the same question in a bunch of different ways. So you're sitting at the staff performance review with hopefully 80% of the issues like yeah. that they've brought up. Hey, I'm lacking here, I need this, I need that. So it's not just you and the performance for you going like, and another thing, and another thing, and you drop the ball here, and yeah. this happened, and that yeah. happened. You're able to like really sort of guide and nurture them through what they've recognized as their shortcomings rather than just point it out. So yeah, get a process in place, get yeah. a plan in place, and we can help you with that. We'd yeah. love to help you with that. And a uh, final sign off thought. I just I think it's just around having the process or having a plan and like there's some templates and stuff that we can definitely help out um, to provide uh, to give a, a base uh, around hiring you know what to do to start with um, to once the person's on board what questions to ask them and then what training is to do and then also staff performance review so because it's a key to anyone's business um, your staff are um, only as good as the sort of platform that you give them to to develop in nice happy hiring <laughs>